The Philadelphia Eagles absolutely collapsed at the end of the regular season, carried that into the playoffs, and they have a lot of problems. I'm not sure that they're going to be fully realized in Madden. I think it's probably going to be one of the easier rebuilds we have. It's an 87 overall team with a 91 overall offense. But at the same time, there are some aging pieces that we have to replace. Lane Johnson on the offensive line at some point probably will have to go. And then defensively, we had a lot to do, at least in that back end. Linebackers as well. Darius Slay, who knows if we can count on him for the future. Just as you know in Madden, age can really catch up to guys. And we're even seeing that in real life as well with some pieces on this team. Now, some would say that the Eagles' problems start at the top with their head cheerleader. But I think we probably keep them for this rebuild. So this is the squad. A number of superstar and superstar X-Factor players. Jason Kelsey, of course, another guy on the offensive line at some point we're going to have to replace. And the contracts on this team might catch up to us pretty quickly. But... Obviously, incredible talent on this offense. Offensive line is amazing. And the receiving core, I mean, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, amazing. And then add in Julio Jones. Name value alone is insane, but obviously uh, not the player he once was. And it really doesn't get featured very much, if at all, in this Eagles offense. I would say he's almost wide receiver four behind Olamide Zacchaeus, or Olamide Zacchaeus, and maybe even Quest Watkins in there as well. Julio, yeah, not the same guy. Jalen Hurts. Should be fine for this rebuild. He's 25 years old, under contract for the next four seasons, I believe. And maybe even more than that. Well, of course, it would be four seasons, I thought, in real life, but actually it's five. But six in this rebuild. The reason I'm starting at the start of the season is because that's just what I do for these fantasy-style rebuilds. I want to make it the same for every team until we get to the realistic rebuild, which is going to be more in the offseason where it's going to be starting from the offseason and then loading in that draft class that features the actual 2024 draft class. So should be a lot of fun. And uh, this is the defense. A lot of work to be done. A lot of work. But, you know, there are some pieces. And there will be some pieces leaving as well. Jason Kelsey has an expiring contract. I would not be shocked to see him retire here, both in real life and in the game. Another expiring contract for DeAndre Swift. For Brandon Graham, who's not going to make it. Nicholas Morrow. Nobody super important. I forgot the Eagles signed Shaq Leonard as well. Trying to get a skill point for Reed Blankenship. He's young enough where we can actually develop him. The problem is, he's not fast enough to keep up with Devontae Smith in this drill. Even with Jake Elliott at quarterback. Getting gold is his struggle so far for Reed Blankenship. So... Uh, there are some young-ish pieces on defense to develop. The other DB drill, I use Keely Ringo. But a lot of those, you know, top-tier players on the Eagles are older. I almost screwed up royally there. But, um, yeah, like, Ringo is, like, on the borderline of being developable. I really just think, not tear it down exactly, but kind of deconstruct it a little bit, which is essentially what that means. And just try to be more competitive in the future. Because when you look at some of these top salaries on our team, it's mostly older players. For 2023, you have the first four players are 32 years old or older, with two players being 35. And then in 2024, it's Mylata and Redick and Goddard, all at the age of regression, or just about within the next couple of years. Mylata will regress maybe a little bit later because he's an offensive lineman. Goddard is at the age of regression. So is Redick at 28. Josh Sweat really not going to get much better than an 82, 83 overall. And then Lane Johnson is 33. Byard's 30. It's a little bit tough. So we got to do a little bit of rearranging. And that probably means trading some of these older players like Darius Slay, like Lane Johnson, maybe, like Kevin Byard. Do you want to hold on to DeAndre Swift? The receivers. It's probably the best receiver duo you can have in Madden for longevity's sake. Maybe a bit better than Miami just because Tyreek Hill's a little bit older. In Madden, we have the best interior duo you can have in Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis. I believe Jalen Carter does have superstar development. And Fletcher Cox probably just needed to trade. We're just going to try and trade a bunch. These are guys that are not in the long-term future. The Eagles didn't do well in the playoffs in 2023 anyway. Let's go ahead and try to take advantage of the value that some of these guys might have right now 
and make some moves. But of course, when I redo the Eagles with a realistic rebuild down the line, I'm just going to be stuck with some of these players, either letting them test free agency, bringing them back for cheap. But of course, we need to really capitalize right now on the Super Bowl window. And Demarcus Graves just looks amazing right away. 6'3", 205, only 21 years old. He's at the top of the draft. We don't know anything about him, but he's got the height, the age, and the name. I mean, Demarcus Graves, I'll take him number one overall. And we could be a team that considers a receiver in the draft as well, just because you have two good ones, or even great ones, but you can get a really nice third option and really just have a dominant receiving trio. It might not be the most pressing of needs, but a receiver three, I think, is pretty important for the Eagles offense in real life. We could choose that in here as well. So that first round pick doesn't really have a ton of value right now. I need to get some value back. I also need to create cap room. Now, I need to go back to top salaries and see who actually clears up the most space right now. I don't really want to take on a massive cap penalty, but I do want more picks and better players. And you can't really do that without trading some of what you have. So Lane Johnson, definitely not going to be traded Darius Slay not going to be traded. A lot of these guys are under contract for the next three years, so I guess that's pretty much going to be our Super Bowl window. James Bradbury, unfortunately, has a pretty big contract here and is not going to be worth that at all. So we're in a little bit of a bind, and based on these contracts right now, we don't really save money by trading anybody. It's just a massive penalty associated with pretty much any move we can make. That's not great. That's not great at all. So either we're going to take a penalty in 2024 or just hold on to these guys. It's a really tough spot, to be honest. I think Brandon Graham is somebody I can feel comfortable about trading right now. Just really anybody with one year remaining. I need to take... Oh, and we have Nolan Smith as well. That's right. I know we struggled a bit this year, but super freak athlete. Going to fill a role in this defense. But I would say... Uh, I just don't want to take the penalty, but I, I don't really see that we have much of a choice. Texas legend, Moro Jomo, hook him. I almost feel like I can't trade Jason Kelsey just because it just, it would be too hard. He's the lifeblood of this Eagles team. It would be a little bit stupid not to, but I'm, I'm just probably not going to. It feels a little bit too weird. Justin Reed could be interesting. Who really helps us? Maybe David Long for a couple years. It's not ideal, but it something. Trading Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, and Rashad Penny to the Broncos for a second round pick next year and a third round pick this year. Again, it's two long-term Eagles that are, it, it's tough to trade those guys emotionally for the Philly fans, I'm sure, but it, just for the sake of the team long-term, we had to do it. We got picks that can help us win. Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, they're just not going to help us do that long-term. This creates a spot for Nolan Smith, it creates a spot for Jordan Davis. In real life, of course, you can only count on Jordan Davis to play like, you know, 20 to 25 snaps a game, probably something in that range. However, not really a thing in Madden. We got a good backup in Milton Williams as well. Moro Jomo, love that. Sidney Brown has star better development. That is interesting. I have Nicobe Dean as well. I didn't really touch on a lot of the younger players here. I should probably just trade Nicholas Moro. Shaq Leonard really doesn't have a role either. And then, I mean, Reddick is so weird there at outside linebacker in a 4-3. He's a rush end. I guess we can leave it. Seems bizarre. I want to trade Kevin Byard. It's such a weird team to do a rebuild with. I guess I can trade Morrow right now. It, again, it, it's, it's a weird situation. Strengths of the class, wide receiver, left tackle, and corner. Probably wouldn't take a tackle, even though the Eagles might do that in real life. Left guard, right guard. Probably wouldn't do that in the draft either, but wide receiver and corner, I would definitely be very, uh, be very interested in. And I like that the fact that wide receiver is number one strength of the class. Demarcus Graves, again, could be very, very good. We have to see his attributes and athletic stuff, right? But to see a receiver be in the top two, already a pretty good omen for him being a very good player. Five and two at the midseason mark. So not losing at all, not rebuilding, but we also haven't traded anybody away yet. Use the regional focus positions for offensive tackle, corner, wide receiver, outside linebacker, and that's it. Players who will be free agents, DeAndre Swift, Shaq Leonard, of course, Jason Kelsey. Swift, I really would like to bring back. Running back is super important in Madden Simulation. He's only 24 years old, superstar development. It is a no-brainer to retain DeAndre Swift, and we're able to on a five-year extension. 
Jason Kelsey apparently wants to come back and at a pretty affordable rate. He signed the contract. I don't know if that prevents him re from retiring. They still can. It does happen from time to time. So we might just be out of that contract, but we re-sign him for now. Shaq Leonard needs to be traded. I guess I would trade Quez Watkins. I'm not sure what his value is, but the rest I think I'm just going to hold on to. Still trying to be somewhat competitive, but also, as I've mentioned a lot, still trying to set us up for success long term. Now, I thought I would trade more at the start of this rebuild. However, a lot more two and three years remaining on these contracts than I expected, which really drastically increases the cap penalty associated with cutting or trading those guys. So it's best to limit that if you can and we can. Trading Shaq Leonard, Quez Watkins, a five and a six this year for a third next year from Chicago. It's kind of shedding dead weight. We already know that Demarcus Graves is a top five talent in the class. Now, doesn't look exceptional with B catching traffic, B catching, C deep route running, and C release. Those are all just good things. Physically, looks very good especially if that speed ends up being great if he runs in the four threes. Medium and short route running are phenomenal, and he's awesome after the catch. I would very much like to draft Demarcus Graves, I believe, but we have other needs, and we would have to move up a lot to get him. Certainly not impossible, but difficult, probably. We finish 11 and 6, and it's going to be Cowboys-Eagles wild card. So both of those teams can't choke in the wild card like they did in real life. Jalen Hurts throws for over 4,000 yards, 28 touchdowns, just nine interceptions. DeAndre Swift was very good, over 1,300 yards, 17 touchdowns. And then receiving, Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown, both over 1,000. But yeah, getting a big-time third receiver would be big when it's a pretty balanced attack in terms of who's getting the football. The top four receivers in terms of receptions are separated by just four so, or five, I guess, with Julio at 68. So, I don't know. Seems like wide receiver three is going to be pretty important in this offense. And I really don't have a reason to change the playbook because this team's playing well. Very successful defense, certainly with a lot of turnovers. Beat the Cowboys in the wild card. Now get the 49ers in the division round. And that is where the season comes to an end. 42-31 Eagles go down at the hands of the 49ers. And... Headed to the offseason, but a lot of potential. I think I'm going to want to move up in the draft. Potential Super Bowl matchup as I record this. We'll see if the Packers can end up beating the 49ers. But the Chiefs are still in it as well as I record this. So that'll be the Super Bowl. We have $24 million in available salary cap. Could actually make a move in free agency, but some of these contracts are going to get really expensive. I'm thinking that we probably should take it easy, even though the salary cap jumped up to $39.2 million. Did Jason Kelsey retire? Because I'm thinking that's definitely a possibility. And Jason Kelsey retires even after signing an extension. Julio Jones also retires as well. 49ers beat the Chiefs in the Super Bowl 30-24. to Lamar Jackson wins MVP like he's likely to do in real life this year. Kobe Turner, Defensive Rookie of the Year, like he's likely to do in real life this year. Or at least in that conversation. Rasheed Rice maybe as well. This is looking as accurate as I've ever seen. Although, uh, Jonathan Taylor, Aaron Donald, I think unlikely to win Offensive or Defensive Player of the Year there. But uh, very interesting. We didn't start with any stats. Just simulated from the start of the year. Of course, their ratings are up because they played well this year in, in terms of like, you know, when you're talking about Rasheed Rice and Kobe Turner and Lamar Jackson. But still, it doesn't always work out like that in simulation. But ready for the offseason. We have assets to move to move up. And... It, there's probably about to be a lot of movement. Do need to upgrade the interior of the offensive line now. Tackle also something to focus on. Are free agents still nobody super important? I think I just let Mara walk. We'll worry about linebacker in the draft, I think. And uh, probably just wait on Devontae Smith. Don't really need to pick up the fifth year option. It's just going to be more expensive to sign him in two years. I'll just worry about signing him next year. Maybe that comes back to bite me, but I'd rather have him for four or five than just guaranteed two. Maybe that's a mistake, but I'm trying to save money long term where things could really become problematic. Looking in the free agent pool, nobody really standing out initially here. Really interested in the interior offensive line. Damian Lewis could be okay for a year. Move Cam Jurgens to center. 
could do that. Cesar Ruiz would be nice as well. We'll try Cesar Ruiz. Nobody's offered him yet. Well, actually, scratch that. Two teams have, but they've offered nothing. The Giants and the Saints. So Cesar Ruiz might just sign instantly. Really looking for an off-ball linebacker in free agency. And then I noticed Michael Hoyt. And I don't know if I've ever really seen his face like this before. They might have just put it into the game. He just looks like a younger Steven Root. I don't know if you guys know Steven Root. He's in a lot of things. You've probably seen him in a movie or a TV show uh, up there on the top right. He just looks like a younger version. Maybe it's the jawline or the eyebrows or something. I don't know. The, the slight smirk. I see it, even if I'm the only one. Yeah, we're just going to take it easy in free agency. Some interesting players that I might have interest in, but I just don't think it, it's worth it to spend the money right now. I think we're going to get really, really active, and I need to have cap space to take on the cap penalty that I'm about to take on. Oh, found a quarterback with elite speed, agility, and acceleration. Ran 4-3-4 at his pro day, Bradley Bass. 6'1", 220, potential undrafted guy. I like it. Probably will take a shot on Bradley Bass at some point. Now, the reason I found him is I found Ryan Harrison. Not that we're really considering quarterback, but I saw great speed, ran in the four fours, and that was only second. So I'm not going to waste a pick on a quarterback that high, but as a potential undrafted guy, no question. Also, Timmy Wilkins looks really good as well. I mean, if we can't get DeMarcus Graves... It, Timmy Wilkins might be a really great consolation prize. This is a really good class to need any type of a player, really. It seems like there are studs in every position. Michael Farrell looks to be no different. A awareness, A impact block, definitely A pass block with the pass protector archetype. A run block, very good athlete, very good skills. I might just go crazy. Have I gone crazy in a while? Maybe a little bit, but now, I mean... I want to go absolutely ballistic because there are so many talented players in this class. I want them all. Kevin Quick, he's anything but. 6'3", three, or 359, ran a 5'2'0", 40-yard dash. That's poor speed, worse that there is, even though I've seen worse 40s in 5'2'0", but that is uh, pretty damn slow. Seems like there are some good linebackers down the board. I'm not sure they're extremely well-rounded, but... They can stop the run. That's something. And on day three, I certainly don't mind that. We do need linebacker pretty badly. And usually I don't draft those guys very high at all because they're just good ones in the third round all the time. But nobody is really like super well-rounded from what I'm seeing already. Farrell expected to go number one overall. I think he's going to be really, really good. Where are these receivers? Demarcus Graves expected to go at number 12. I like that. And Timmy Wilkins not expected to go until 25. What is going on? These guys look way too good to be available at these spots. Michael Farrell is a true top five talent. Is it worth it to go make a move up to number one to replace Lane Johnson? I think it could be Graves. We know is top five. What about Timmy Wilkins? Top five as well. Oh my goodness. Okay, well... Maybe now it doesn't make so much sense to move up for the receiver, but he's at 12. I can surely figure out a way to get like 1, 12, and 25, or just 1 and 12. I don't know. It's going to be difficult, but this offensive tackle looks like one of the best I've ever seen in the draft. And you know what? It's Philadelphia Eagles football. They love their offensive linemen in the first round. I don't know about trading up for one this high, but... We got to figure out, out a way. We got to. I know Lane Johnson is 34. I get that. But the offers we're getting back from some of these teams are terrible. I see Nico, uh, Nico Collins. I just think it'd be more fun to draft somebody. But I think maybe Sam Cosme is an 86 overall right guard. Wow. Hook him, of course. Trading Lane Johnson, Milton Williams, a second this year and next year. No, excuse me, a second in 2025 and a second in 2026. We're a first this year and next year from the Jets. So that moves us up to number 13 in the draft. Still not quite up to where we need to be. It's very difficult to get a number one overall pick in this game. I'm doing everything I can. All right, well, is it smart? I'm not really worried about that at the moment. 
It's an interdivision trade with the Commanders. Kevin Byard, Josh Sweat, Kenneth Gainwell, a first this year, number 13 overall, a second round pick next year, and a third round pick next year, gets us the number one overall pick where we can take an offensive tackle. Is it stupid in a Madden rebuild? Yeah, it is borderline brain dead. But Michael Farrell looks very good. 6'5", 308, 21 years old. Just probably about the best tackle prospect I've ever seen in the draft. A is across the board. Really, really talented. Does have hidden development. You better. You better have it. 88 strength, 71 speed, 81 acceleration. I said I wanted to go crazy. Now, a lot of you are going to think I'm just completely destroying the Eagles as a Giants fan, and this is my dream, and in a way it is, but I am trying to rebuild this team, and Michael Farrell replacing Lane Johnson, did we get good value back for doing that? No, we did not, but sometimes it's fun to go up and trade for what could be the best player in the draft, and hopefully a generational offensive lineman. Still have multiple first round picks next year, multiple second round picks this year, Still probably not done trading. Again, I know that wasn't like Madden smart, but that's okay. Trading Isaiah Rogers and four future day three picks for a second round pick from the Cardinals, number 35 overall. Kind of all in an effort to trade up for a receiver. That's kind of what I'm thinking about doing. Still pick a 25 overall. I guess it, again, it would be smarter to just wait. Just wait until that other receiver gets to us. I, maybe I should. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll get up to like 11 or 12. See if both receivers are still on the board. And they are. So Timmy Wilkins has moved up the board. You look at receiver here. They're both top five talents. It, Timmy Wilkins has better hands. Better deep route running. He's older. And isn't quite the same level of athlete. But very good route running. Demarcus Graves is younger, a little bit better athletically. I'm looking especially at elite acceleration and great agility. It's very close. Now, they are both 6'3". Maybe I said one was a little bit bigger. Um, it's very close. It, it's tough to even pick one, which says that you should probably just wait for Timmy Wilkins. Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to get both. I will say solid acceleration scares me a little bit but I think I can probably live with it so I expect to see that top receiver Demarcus Graves go here at number 12 I just don't think it makes sense to trade up it's actually RJ Forbes commanders now at 13 I mean this receiver is still on the board will the Giants take him they will not I mean at what point do we just have to is there any point in getting both I'm trying to think I I don't think there is. Trading Avante Maddox, James Bradbury, a second round pick this year, number 57, a third round pick next year, or three thirds this year, and a fourth next year from the Cardinals. There is a method to my madness. We'll see if it ends up uh, paying off for us. Now, I don't know if this receiver is still going to be on the board after the Lions pick. They don't necessarily need wide receiver, but these are two, you know, top five talents in the draft back to back. I want to make a move. Trading a first round pick this year, number 25, our first round pick next year, a third round pick this year, for a first this year from the Lions, number 15, a second next year, and a third this year, number 79. That's what it took to make this happen. So now we don't pick until the top of the second round. If we want that other receiver, Timmy Wilkins, I don't know. Seems like it'd be a bad decision. Demarcus Graves ends up being the pick. He's just slightly more athletic, in my opinion, and he's a year younger. Catching is not quite as good, but the route running's there, the break tackle's there. I just think he might be slightly better long-term. Demarcus Graves ends up being the pick. Very good athletically, does have star or better development with that hidden dev trait. Could the other receiver end up being better? Absolutely, but I, I don't know. I'm not committing to not drafting him, but it would be difficult to. I don't really think I'm going to move back up into the first round. We have Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, now Demarcus Graves. Do we need Timmy Wilkins to have a really good fourth receiver? 
I don't think so, but we know he's very good. It's certainly a tough decision. If he makes it to like 28, maybe I could trade up because it's such a short way to go. But it's just probably not a good decision. There was another receiver ahead of him. What did this guy do? What's It's 28. He's still available. There he goes. All right. It, it didn't make any sense. Didn't make any sense. We didn't need a good fourth receiver. But sometimes a player is so good, I can't help myself. You know what I mean? Oh, and Russ Taylor still available? Yeah, I mean, this was absolutely the right call. Now, Lloyd Gibson, I looked at. More of a defensive tackle. Elite strength, though. You know, if his power moves are really good, he could be amazing. But this is an easy pickup. A six foot four corner with probably A man coverage with that man to man archetype B press, B zone, B catching physically. Good enough. But he's six four. Play Rex, awful, but does have hidden dev. Is just fast enough, I would say. 90 speed, 90 acceleration. Incredible height. End of the second round. Now we have a pick coming up pretty soon as well. Oh, they said Donald Glover. Teddy Kemp is available. Looks like a good, solid fourth receiver. I liked his speed. Might end up going that way. He's around two to three talent, but could be a good kick returner maybe. Kind of seems like a no-brainer selection. We could trade out of this, but I think he's going to be a solid fourth option in there. Better than Olamide Zacchaeus. Certainly lose Quez Watkins. Does have hidden dev. 94 speed, 95 acceleration. Solid pick at the end of the second round. And hopefully this linebacker, Chester Wolf makes it a few picks. It's a round three, pick three. Because I think he could end up being a starting linebacker for us. And we certainly need help at linebacker. A lot of day three guys that I think we're going to be drafting here pretty soon. Just because they look like solid players. Don't know about the UDFAs at this point, but Chester Wolf is up first. Great speed, elite acceleration, A tackle, A play rec, A block shedding. Very good. And does have hidden dev, 84 speed, 91 acceleration. Looks like a really great starting option instantly. Next up on my board is Paul Bishop from Notre Dame. Another big corner, six foot three. Good speed. Skills wise, A tackle, I like a lot. B man coverage. He pressed his own. Not great. Uh, probably not here. I think this is a trade down. Trading two third round picks for a second next year from Arizona. I think that that's a worthwhile trade for us. The reason I got, you know, so many third round picks in this draft is because I want the flexibility to take players that we want if they're there. But if they're not, or if the range doesn't make sense, we can move out and still get top picks next year. It's a really good way of doing things. It kind of counteracts my stupid decisions from earlier. I think I should not take the corner, Paul Bishop. He looks good. I just think linebacker is more of a need. These guys are at the top of the third round, or top of day three, I should say. I think. John Walker is 48 picks down the board. We have, what, two more picks here? We could take the corner. What is my depth looking like? Because I traded so many. Drafted one, Keely Ringo, Zach McPherson, Josh Job. I could draft another one. In fact, I think I will. I'm going to be a little bit disappointed if that linebacker goes off the board, though. That would be annoying. Am I worried about that now? Now I kind of am. I've made myself worried about it. Is he so good that we can't... Ah, he's not, like, amazing. I mean, he, I think he's going to be okay, obviously, but... Not the end of the world if we don't get him. I think having another corner could be a little bit more important. Another huge one. 6'3". Only normal dev, though, but very good athletically. This is our last pick of the draft. But is it? It might not actually be. We'll see. So, yeah, the other linebacker does go off the board, which is kind of what I expected to happen. Carl Henry looks to be a very similar player. Not mad about it. He only has normal dev, though. Not great. 82 speed, 88 acceleration. Looks a bit like the linebacker we drafted earlier. And, you know, I probably want a seventh round pick to draft that quarterback or, or something like that. Maybe a, a fifth or a sixth. All right, trading two sixes and a seven for a sixth from Chicago. Hopefully that freak athlete quarterback's still available. I'm just curious what he's going to look like. I don't know that I've seen a QB that looks exactly like him in the draft so far. Maybe he's somebody that profiles to make a move to receiver even. That could be fun. I know that archetype exists. Or at least I've heard of it existing. I've not seen it. And Bradley Bass, we're going to draft you here. 6'1", 220, 22 years old at UTSA. Looks like decent accuracy. 
but is an incredible athlete. At least for a quarterback, but also overall. Welcome to the Eagles. Only normal dev is actually kind of a surprise. 91 throw power, 93 speed, 91 acceleration, 91 agility, 89 change of direction. Definitely a fun build. Only normal dev really surprises me. But definitely a fun player. And here is our draft. Michael Farrell is an 81 overall. Probably the number one player in the draft. 85 pass block, 88 strength, 86 impact blocking. Was it worth it to go up and get him? Well, this was pretty much best case scenario. He looks really good. Demarcus Graves is a 78. So not as high as I was hoping for, but still quite good. And I mean, 81 catching is still great. Deep route running leaves a little bit to be desired. 93 agility though. 85 juke move is amazing. Of course, we're going to compare him to the other receiver. Decent traits as well. Russ Taylor is a 74. Teddy Kemp, 73. 75 for Chester Wolf. 72 for Paul Bishop. Carl Henry is a 68. And Bradley Bass is a 67. I'm particularly interested in him in terms of what else he can do. 65 trucking. Like, can you catch? I know that seems crazy, but I'm just curious. I've heard it can be. And we'll see if it actually can be. So he has, let's see, 74 catching, 75 catching traffic, 73 spectacular catch. This is the wide receiver quarterback build. He can also throw a little bit, obviously. But do I just move him to wide receiver? Or running back, even? Moving him to running back would be crazy. He's a 69 overall wide receiver, which isn't amazing, obviously. But he's not that bad there. 74 carrying is not that great. What is his overall at running back, I wonder? This is what you're supposed to do with some of these guys, if they can do it. Running back may be a little bit weirder. He's a 71 overall. I think he just might play running back for us. We needed depth anyway. That's our running back. Did get the number one overall player in the draft. Timmy Wilkins and Demarcus Graves had the same overall. Now, plus one speed for Wilkins, plus three acceleration for Graves. I'm sure they're going to be very similar. He has hidden dev. Yeah, they look quite similar. Catching's a little bit higher on Timmy Wilkins. What is his dev trait? This is going to be a big one. If it's Superstar X Factor, I might be upset. But it's only star. So already I feel really good about our decision. A lot of good running backs in this class. But we got one in one of the weirder ways of all time. There's another wolf in this class. Wild. Rashawn Justice I looked at. He looked okay. A little bit old. I think he was 23. There's Chester Wolf. Where's this other linebacker? Also, what a pick. Jamario Daniels. Top of the third round. 88 speed. I never even looked at him. 75 overall. Wow. Yeah, a lot of decent middle linebackers in this draft. I should have looked at that position a little bit more. The thing with middle linebacker is they're never really going to blow you away with their attribute grades, but it's everything, everything else that factors into their overall. Look how fast these guys are. Three middle linebackers in a row. 90 speed, 89 speed, 91 speed. Wild. John Walker ends up being a 68 overall. Same overall as Carl Henry. He does have hidden dev though, so it would have been the right pick. It's not like he's amazing or anything. Yeah, but it would have been nice to get him. Yeah, it seems weird to see this quarterback because he does look like a QB. Holds the ball like a QB, wearing a QB number. Yet he's got electric speed. And am I wasting him a bit at running back? I mean, yes and no. He's kind of like the Taysom Hill build. That's kind of what we're dealing with. I should have just called it that, but I mean, he's got a bigger arm than Taysom Hill. Would be a really fun player to use in your franchise if you have like double passes or something in your playbook. But yeah, I don't know that we're going to be able to use him much in this rebuild other than backup running back. Guess he'd be a decent receiving back. But uh, this is certainly one of the more fun builds I've ever seen. That's for sure. I should have just put in uh, Jake Elliott at quarterback so we get a lot of fumbles. But I decided to just play out the actual drill with Wolf. And we are lighting it up. Have not, not made a play so far. But no fumbles, unfortunately. And that's the big problem you get sometimes. Is you're right there to make the tackle. And that you just get shrugged off. So... Easy gold, probably no dev trade upgrade though for Wolf, but you know what? He's playing fast, playing strong, and will be a starter right away. Now, I thought about making him a middle linebacker, 
so that if we boost him up to a 75 overall, he's a 75 right now outside linebacker, probably would go down to a 74 overall middle linebacker. When he gets up to a 75, if he's got superstar dev or better, we get a plus ability slot. But I don't know. He's going to start either way. It doesn't really matter if I know or not. So I'll just probably leave it as is. And Sidney Brown's going to start for us as well. He's got star dev. He's only 24 years old. Of course, twin brother of Chase Brown, running back of the Cincinnati Bengals. Sidney Brown could be quite good. Also, seems really agile. One of the most agile quick DBs I've probably used in one of these drills, which is bizarre. I mean, he's a really good athlete, but I mean, it's... It, I don't think I've ever felt someone feel uh, quite this agile before in these drills. Just so responsive. And it's going to be one of the easiest goals of my life. Is Sidney Brown a cheat code in this? I mean, look at the hip flip, hip turn, and run. It's too easy for Sidney Brown. So, easy gold. And uh, we might get like 30,000 points. And he won't even throw it. 35k final. This will be the team for this season, and I like where we are. Obviously, I know how the draft went. It was a little bit wild, but I think we really are set up for the future here. Defense needs to take some strides, but Chester Wolf was able to get upgraded to a 76 overall after training camp and preseason so far. He's going to end up being a really nice starter, and I'm really looking forward to him developing as a cover player as well. The speed isn't phenomenal, but I don't think it has to be anything... Crazy. It doesn't have to be 90 for him to be a good player. 84 speed still should be plenty. And uh, hopefully this is a really, really good season. And this team's capable of actually competing for a Super Bowl this year. Had an early exit last season. Hoping that's not the case this time around as we have apparently another really good receiver at the top of the board. But probably will avoid him. We want to bring back Devontae Smith. That's priority number one right now. Oh yeah, I also signed Bobby Wagner. That was interesting, I guess. He's better than the alternative, which is Henry, who we drafted. So this is what we have rocking. Move to Kobe Dean over. But that's pretty much all there is to report. Taylor has just star development, unfortunately. I'm also considering a move to a 3-4. I think it fits our personnel a whole lot better because we would have Jordan Davis as a nose tackle, Jalen Carter as a defensive end, we would have Hassan Reddick and Nolan Smith in more natural outside linebacker positions. Inside linebacker of the future is Chester Wolf, who we drafted right, and also Nakobe Dean. So we really just need one more interior defensive lineman, or in Madden, like a slightly bigger, like 4-3 defensive end that we just slide inside that can actually get after the quarterback and isn't just another defensive tackle. So that's something I'm going to consider depending on how this year goes. But it fits our personnel a whole lot better. All right, first things first. Got to bring back Devontae Smith. A five-year deal is pretty comfortable for me. Yes, as expensive as $19 million in 2029. Shouldn't be a concern. Still have $72 million in remaining salary cap. Reed Blankenship does not want to be here. Interesting. Can't blame him. It is Philadelphia after all. Let's go ahead and re-sign Landon Dickerson. And Landon Dickerson is back as well. One of the... Better young interior offensive lineman in the league. You know, it wouldn't shock me if he ended up playing center. Played center at Alabama. If Jason Kelsey retires, that could be something they consider. I expect it to be Cam Jurgens, but you never know. Two-year extension for Hassan Reddick. Yep, he is back. Still 46 million. And we don't really need to bring back anybody. I signed Corey Bohorquez out of free agency. I don't know if I show that or not. Jake Elliott is here. Don't really care if we re-sign him, but I, I probably will try. Reed Blankenship is not too expensive, is still young enough where he can develop. We'll extend him. Might take a little bit more money because he doesn't really want to be here. Yeah, we might need to sign a mentor at the position. So that could be something I try to do. Rodney McLeod is a mentor. Welcome back. Or, well, yeah, he was, he was an eagle. Welcome back. We're in two at the midseason mark. Man, Eagles don't want to see the Bucks, that's for sure. Bucks only two and five. I don't really think we need to bring anybody back at this point. Oh, we'll read Blankenship, that's right. Now, I signed Rodney McLeod. Did they cut him or something? Why are they showing me position depth at corner? I, I need a safety. Graves has only star dev. How do we not know the right tackles development trait yet? How has he not played 500 snaps? We haven't had 500 offensive snaps. 
through this point of the season seems insane. Wolf has star dev. Everyone from this class is star dev. I'm hoping that the tackle has superstar development. We'll find out maybe next week or the week after, but yeah, I'll probably simulate to week 11, do the scouting focus players. And so I'll show you there. I'll find out as well. We're getting crushed right now. Four and five. Offense is still doing real well. Defense, number 25 in the league. We're getting smacked. But the offense also is not putting up points. This is not good. And Nazir Ballantyne looks amazing, of course. All right, Reed Blankenship now magically interested because Rodney McLeod's on the team. Let's just give him a medium risk offer. Up the money slightly. And Reed Blankenship not ready to say yes. Get ready. I don't know what to tell you. Superstar Dev on the right tackle. Thank you. We needed it. We traded up so much to get him at number one. Michael Farrell, Superstar Dev, up to an 83 overall as a rookie. Gotta love it. Tough Nut is an ability. T okay, interesting. Had a couple of those in my day. It's week 11. We're going to simulate here. Try to re-sign Reed Blankenship and then head to the playoffs, which we might not be playing in. Another loss. This defense sucks. It's a number 28 ranked defense. I mean, this really is the Eagles in real life this year. Terrible. I think this is my best offer for Blankenship. He's kind of got to accept this. Finally. All right, that's one more thing I don't have to worry about. Strong safety locked up. He's 25 years old. Still in a fine spot for development. Not amazing, obviously, but it's, it's still fine. I get caught up with age so often because you really need them to be 21, 22, 23 years old to be at a really good point where they could be developed in the draft. And, um, you know, if they're a third-year player and they're 22 or 23, that's obviously incredible, but rare. But that's why those players are more valuable. They gain XP faster. They get to 99 overall faster. And the Eagles actually made the playoffs. Our defense still sucked, but got marginally better. We must have had an unbelievable second half. Four losses in a row didn't help. But look at this back half of the season. Week 12 onwards, just one loss. Made up for that four weeks in a row of just losing and two games to division opponents as well. This was really lucky to get in. Hurts didn't really do anything individually amazing. Just was safe with the football, which you'll take, especially when your running back has 21 touchdowns. Love that. DeAndre Swift crushing it. Receiving only one 1,000-yard receiver, A.J. Brown. Devontae Smith was good. Our third receiver, Demarcus Graves, really didn't do a whole lot. We just, in the same offense, same playbook, did not throw the ball nearly as much. Very strange. And then defensively, N'Kobe Dean with plenty of tackles. Same thing for the rookie, Chester Wolf. 19 TFLs for Jalen Carter. 17 for Nolan Smith. Wow. 14 for Redick. 13 for Jordan Davis. And no double-digit sackers. We pretty much got no pressure on the quarterback at all incredibly low and not even many interceptions this year our defense was just god awful wild card round of the playoffs not going to make any playbook changes at this point but lions go down we have made it to the divisional round of the playoffs cesar ruiz going to go up to a 76 overall it's just we lost most of our talent on offense jason kelsey our defense really hasn't changed i don't know it's, uh, Lane Johnson obviously is not here as well. Like, Kevin Byard, I get it. But is Kevin Byard really the lifeblood that was holding this team together? I don't really believe that. I don't. I don't know. James Bradbury was like an 80 overall. Like, there are some pieces that are worse. But not significantly. Cowboys in the division round. Very tough team to beat in Sim. This is probably the end of the year. And it is. Three-point loss heads us to the offseason. Our defense needs to change. I'm going to hire a new defensive coordinator. Yeah, that's number one. And the Cowboys, it appear, would win the Super Bowl 27-26 over the Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson did win league MVP and offensive player of the year. You usually don't see that combo in Madden. Usually it's two different players. Going to hold off on extending Jordan Davis as well for the same reason that I held off on Devontae Smith. It will only be more expensive down the line gonna take it easy for now head to the offseason we could you know spend big time money in free agency i really think a move to a 3-4 is the best move we can make right now so that's what i'm thinking about i think maybe steelers defense 
All right, 53 million. Who is here? Tua Tunga Bailoa, Javon Holland. Sign him up. Yes, that's the one. That's the one. The Amador Lenore is an 86 overall, huh? That would actually be a pretty big, a pretty big pickup for our team. Jerome Baker's here. That could be good. It's just a little bit too expensive. I think I'd rather have Diamador Lenore. He wants to be back home in California. Go the other way, please. Big time money. We have it. Why not? Trying to revamp the secondary. And we just did it. Javon Holland and Diamador Lenore have both signed. Both Oregon players. And both coming to the Philadelphia Eagles, which I already told you pretty much. But yeah, big time signing. We got our CB2. We got our starting free safety. Listen, if Kevin Byard leaving was that big of a deal, we've done a whole lot better by getting in... Ooh, also, superstar dev for Reed Blankenship, but by getting Javon Holland. I'm also playing with development trait regression on, which I typically don't do, but I wanted to experiment and see how it would work if I maxed out star, superstar, and superstar X-Factors. I think Slay went down, Dallas Goddard down maybe as well. Overall, though, it really hasn't been too noticeable. Okay, well, we need another defensive lineman. Could use a better corner. Not really. Lenore's good. Slay's regressing, of course. And I, I guess really defensive line's a big focus right now. I'm still fine with Cam Jurgens. Philip Crocker is a top five talent at a UNC. If we wanted to move up for a corner, it's an option. Uh, Deshaun Demps, who I've been scouting, is like the number 11 player in the draft is expected to go number one overall. Now I almost wish I didn't make him a focus player because I don't think we're going to be able to move up for him. Brocker's supposed to be gone after uh, the number four overall pick. We do pick at number 14, though. That is... Whose first round pick is that? Somebody's. The Jets. The Jets. Let's just start the draft, see what happens. Saints at number one overall do... Not go with the player they were expected to take. They go with the quarterback, Joe Schwartz from Maryland. A little bit of a curveball, but Deshaun Demps is gone shortly after. There goes Nazir Ballantyne. All right, the mock draft has led me astray so far. Do I just trade up to four if I want that corner? Probably do. I still need defensive line badly. I have three second round picks. Hmm... Have a first next year. How do we do this? Trading number... I didn't think that'd be accepted. Trading number 14 and number 44 to move up to number 4. And we're going to take that corner. He just looks really good. And this would give me the opportunity to trade Darius Slay and hopefully get a really, really good defensive lineman. Not quite sure how that's going to happen yet, but we'll figure it out. Philip Crocker, welcome to Philadelphia. Hidden Dev, 94 acceleration to go along with 92 agility, 91 speed. Should be good. I don't know if he's going to be amazing, but should be quite good. High 70s, maybe. Let me get Aiden Hutchinson. Oh, that'd be a great addition. Perfect in my 3-4. Obviously, he's not really a 3-4 defensive end, but we would make it work. I think we can do it. Just give me... Let me get the 2027 first rounder in there. And then it might take both of these second round picks to get it done. But it, it might even be more than that, actually. But this is this is worth it. Darius Slay, first rounder next year. Two second rounders this year for Aiden Hutchinson. Big time game wrecker on the interior of our defensive line. He'll also probably be a rush end over Nolan Smith. And I could probably use another off-ball linebacker just to get into the mix when Nolan Smith uh, is a liability out there. He's a really good athlete, but not a coverage player. Let's go with another interior defensive lineman. Jose Hampton. His A finesse moves. Not really that good of an athlete, but good guy to throw in the mix. There were just no good linebackers. I'll probably just sign one. Maybe Bobby Wagner's in free agency. Maybe I trade for one. Kind of going all in right now. We have our team in place. It's just about keeping it together, re-signing guys, and developing what we've drafted and, you know, the young players that were already here. Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis. Got a good team. Just got to go out and win. Draft recap. Show me an 80 overall for the corner. 80 overall for Philip Crocker. All right, a little bit better than I expected. 82 man, 82 zone, 78 press, or 75 press, 68 play rec. Will get upgraded. Awareness is already quite high. 
Yeah, he should be a starter right away. Wow, really good class. Nazir Ballantyne was also an 80 overall, but we did get the joint highest rated player in the class. Really good running back in the second round. Good guard, also a 79 overall. And then two monster quarterbacks. This was a really, really good draft class. Falcons ended up doing quite well despite trading away that pick to us. Still upgraded their secondary, although I don't know why they needed a free safety. Just BPA, because they have 99 overall Jesse Bates there right now. Don't really need that, but maybe they want to move him to corner. Although, obviously, I don't think the CPU makes position changes. Pretty sure they don't. I really feel like we could use an upgrade at linebacker in general. Just, I don't know how we're going to do it. Offense looks great. Defense looks great. Just one better linebacker. I think it'd be really good for us. We do have picks to trade if we wanted to go that route. I'd like N'Kobe Dean to be upgraded, but, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm not going to for sure trade my future for a linebacker, but it is a position I'd like to upgrade. There just weren't really many options for us in the draft. I think getting Aiden Hutchinson was a priority. You know, once we saw that as a viable option, it needed to be done. He really should totally revamp this pass rush. I'm not sure if he's going to be a rush end or not. I would expect like 99% sure that I put him there, but yeah, maybe it's Nolan Smith and Hassan Reddick, but yeah, probably Aiden Hutchinson and Hassan Reddick instead. I think it's just a better mix. And then Nolan Smith, rotational player. I don't know. That's pretty much what he's going to be. Just not developing that much, not playing that well. Had to be upgraded. I don't know that there's really a way to have a big upgrade with a linebacker. So this is going to be the team. Yamador Lenore's new CB1. Got a rookie as CB2 and then Keely Ringo Russ Taylor. It's good. Could be better. Aiden Hutchinson's obviously a big time upgrade. Reddick and Hutchinson will be the edge rushers. And then of course, Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter up the middle. I'm expecting big things. The move to the 3-4 should totally change how good we are. This needs to be a playoff team. This needs to be an 11 plus win team. 5-2 and two start is real nice. We'll take that. 17 players ready to negotiate. It's going to be Jalen Carter. Well, it's going to be Jordan Davis. Jalen Carter's next year, excuse me. $48 million to bring back Jurgens, Dean, Goddard, Mylotta, Davis. Really, the important ones are these top three. Davis is very expensive. I was not ready for him to be this expensive. Close to 20 mil per year. I mean, we're going to do it. But it's really expensive. My lot is going to be extremely expensive. 20 mil a year as well. Five-year extension. Jordan Mylotta is back. Now only 17 mil to work with. Dallas Goddard going to eat up into a considerable amount of that. See if he accepts this deal. And he does. It's a three-year extension. And then we have 4.6 million to bring back. Two starters, really, which is not going to happen. How do we free up money? It's tough to say. Could restructure. Could restructure. Also, might have to cut or trade somebody. Our biggest savings right now appears to be A.J. Brown, but can't move on from him. Can't really move on from any of these guys. A.J. Brown's going to be $41 million in 2026. Are you kidding me? All right, that's absurd. Might want to just defer some Jalen Hurts money because that's going to that's gonna crush us. We restructure this. We're going to be able to next season. So we can free up something. But yeah, it's a lot of money. We'll take a 12-win season. Unfortunately, playing in the wild card game as the Cowboys won 13. Defense, though, had to have been much better. Jalen Hurts with a better season as well. I don't know how the attempts compared to last season. 439 is a decent amount, but nothing crazy. Yeah, it was more than last season at 408, though, but also averaged more yards per attempt. DeAndre Swift was still incredible, as was Jalen Hurts on the ground. 11 touchdowns, 754 yards rushing. Bradley Bass had 11 touchdowns. Our offense was unreal. Devontae Smith, unreal year. A.J. Brown, hardly any touchdowns. Not really many receiving yards for the team, but I'll take it when our ground game was as good as it was, and it was really, really good. Multiple double-digit sack guys, Aiden Hutchinson and Hassan Reddick. Interior of the defensive line didn't do much. Had like a hiccup there. That was interesting. Diamador Lenore with six interceptions would lead the team by a lot. But yeah, unfortunately, this is a wild card team. And we got to try and beat the Minnesota Vikings in the wild card. They've got a home field advantage. 
which is absurd, but it's what we're dealing with. Philip Crocker, I think it's just star dev. No, he's got an ability slot. He's uh, He's got superstar, okay? Man coverage is great. Zone could be a little bit higher, but he's already as good as Darius Slay was. No brainer decision. Plus, we ended up with Aiden Hutchinson. I like what's happening. Just don't lose to the 85 overall Vikings, please. Please don't. Oh my God. All right. Another offseason. Cowboys, Ravens, Super Bowl 60. Have not been very successful with this Eagles team. And it is tough being in the same division with the Cowboys who are so unbelievable in Madden simulation. Although the Ravens knock them out. Win the Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes wins league MVP. No Eagles anywhere in there. All right, up to 18 mil in available salary cap. We'll pick up the fifth year on Jalen Carter at this point, just because I know how expensive it's going to be to bring him back based off Jordan Davis. I guess we'll do the same on Nolan Smith, back end of the first round guy. So do we want Jurgens and Kobe Dean? Dean is going to have to be a yes. And Jurgens, we just don't really have a better option. Like he's a 75 overall. It isn't great. But he's he's going to be what we have to re-sign here. He's going to test free agency. Not the end of the world. We need a kicker. We need a center. That's it. That's it. I say that's it, but... If there's something else that stands out, we could try to move some money around. Zach Martin, Joe Tooney, Trent Brown, Demarcus Lawrence. Not really standing out to me. Zach Tom is interesting, but doesn't really fit. Can I guess? Can I just get Joe Tooney to play center, or move Landon Dickerson? Let me move some money around. See if we can get some flexibility and really go for it in this offseason. Are right, we gonna go ahead and restructure Javon Holland and Jordan Mailata as well? That's an easy one. So now we can afford Joe Tooney if we want to do that, and it's a good fit. It's a good fit. We'd have 9.89 million left over. Tooney, I would expect to sign. And then we need a kicker. Do we have a punter already? I'm actually not sure. I think we don't. So Ryan Stonehouse would be would be a good fit. And bringing back Jake Elliott as well. And the team's as good as it's going to be. Let's just have these guys sign, please. Joe Tooney's like a little bit over the top but it makes our offensive line as good as it possibly can be. He signs, as does Jake Elliott. Ryan Stonehouse, unlikely to be too far behind. Nobody's offering him. Okay, Landon Dickerson moves to center. Makes more sense than Tooney. Cesar Ruiz could have done it as well, but stick him at right guard. Offense looks awesome. AJ Brown down to superstar from superstar X-Factor. Devontae Smith back up to superstar. And then defensively, Blankenship back down. Lenore up. Jordan Davis down. It's hard to keep track of all these changes. Sydney Brown is up to superstar. Wild. We don't pick until number 23. Not really interested in any type of a trade-up. I think we just take whoever the best player available is. What do we really need here? A backup tight end, maybe? That wouldn't be the worst idea. Center here. Obviously not really a need anymore. All right, Randy Hamlin it is. Elite athlete. Skills look really good. Welcome to the Eagles. Only normal development, but should be a good backup tight end. Maybe I should have looked more at linebackers. I really just saw, ah, this tight end looks good enough, and then drafted him, but he, he did look pretty good. I think he is pretty good. Let's go with Alton McClendon here. Another good linebacker. Looks pretty solid. Great speed and acceleration. Good special teams player there in the back end of the third round. Let the CPU take that seventh. Hamlin ends up being a 74, and Alton McLennan ends up being a 73 overall. Really a pretty good draft given our limited picks. And this draft class was pretty good overall. But nobody that we really could have taken. It's a 92 overall team. Let's have some playoff success finally, please. 2026, this is the year. Might make a big move for a middle linebacker now. It could be time. Keely Ringo and next year's first gets me Patrick Queen. Pretty much the best middle linebacker I could have acquired. Would have been too tough to get Tremaine Edmonds or any of these top guys. And look at the cap penalty 
associated with getting any of those guys. The Niners already have no cap space as it is. It's impossible to pull off a trade with the Niners in a franchise. They're negative 82 million in cap room. It happens every single rebuild because the salaries go up and unlike real life, they're not adjustable here in Madden or the team doesn't. So they're just $82 million against the cap and or over the cap and they, there's nothing that happens to them. It's annoying to say the least well team looks a little bit better with patrick queen in there corners are nice like the defensive line specialist gonna look like this sydney brown's actually playing sub linebacker it's a big part of why he went up to superstar development this past year and he's also playing slot corner well he can't do both so it's probably just gonna be nicobe dean uh, along with patrick queen which is fine offense looks good come on Let's finally find some postseason success here. It's been pretty difficult to come by so far. 6-0 and oh at the midseason mark. Commanders are 5-1. and one. Cowboys still not doing too badly either. This is going to be a very tough division. Now, we are undefeated up to this point, which is the best thing that you could possibly can be. I doubt it holds up, though, is kind of what I'm getting at. Should be a playoff team. But we already knew that. We knew this was going to be a playoff team. It's just about playoff success at this point. Need to see a little bit more. And this has been one of the better teams that I've built in Madden 24. This is a phenomenal team. The offense is like a 97 overall. Could be even higher by the time we get upgrades going into the playoffs. The defense is into the 90s. The team overall is like a 92 or a 93. It's the best team in the league. We knew that. 16-1. and one is the final regular season record. We'll see who the one team was that actually managed to win a game against us. And it turns out it was the Seahawks by three points in week 15. That close. Three points away from at least tying and then forcing OT maybe. But four points away from a perfect regular season. Don't see it done very often, if at all. Patriots are the team that has done it the most recently. Jalen Hurts, incredible season. 33 touchdowns to only three interceptions. DeAndre Swift still playing amazingly. 13 touchdowns for Bradley Bass. This guy's unreal. No 1,000-yard receivers, but it's, you know, spread pretty evenly here. Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown very close. Both had double-digit touchdowns, though, which I think they'd be happy about. Aiden Hutchinson, dominant. 17 and a half sacks, 11 for Redick, 11 for Carter. Not really too many interceptions, but the pressures were there. Defensive line going crazy. Love to see it. Obviously, first round by when you go 16-1. and one. So we've got a pretty good chance here. Division round of the playoffs is against the LA Rams. They went 8-9. and 28-21. I don't really like jumping in in the division round of the playoffs. Just feels like a bit too early. Probably should have done it there because we're in 2026. Do get the eight-point victory, a little bit close for my liking, but we get the win. NFC Championship. Falcons made it. They were picking number four overall, and now they're one win away from a Super Bowl. We traded up. We traded up to get their number four overall pick to take the player that they were likely going to take, and now the Dirty Birds play for it all. Winner goes to the Super Bowl. Winner is your NFC Champion. Home field advantage at the link. See if the Eagles can actually get it done this time. Tie ball game 7-7. Falcons take the lead here as we approach halftime. 21-7. Eagles not really showing up in this one until they tie the game. Third quarter, take the lead 28-21. Falcons tie it up at 28. Three and a half minutes to go. Jumping in here on offense from midfield. This really should be the final possession of the game. Four down territory at this level of the field. Just need to get first downs. Wow, wide open up the middle. That pretty much could do it. I love when they have two middle linebackers in the A gap, or A gaps. It's just so easy to run the football against it, and that's what we're doing. Falcons call their final timeout. Ball inside the 10 yard line now. It's essentially game over. Don't even want to score a touchdown. Just want to line this up, but oh my goodness, DeAndre Swift is too elusive. Jake Elliott field goal for the win. Chip shot, and it's good. Game over, Eagles headed to the Super Bowl. Gonna be an Eagles-Chiefs Super Bowl. Never seen this before. 
Chase went 10 and 7, still made the Super Bowl. Another one of Madden's best simulating teams. Chiefs and Cowboys really are the two best. Although the Ravens lately have been pretty incredible as well. Those seem to be the best playbooks, but also they're really good rosters, so it's tough to say for sure. But trying to win a Super Bowl. Chiefs are a 91 overall. This team's no joke. Didn't do that well in the regular season, just like real life. But playoff Chiefs might just be a different animal. See if they can beat the Bills. It'll be an interesting game. But here in the game, more focused on Eagles and the Chiefs in video game land. Winner, Hoist the Lombardi. Chiefs on the board early. Seven, make it 14 nothing. Eagles with the first uh, touchdown of their own, and they tie it up. Down by seven now after another Chiefs touchdown, but it is a back-and-forth high-scoring shootout. Eagles with the lead. Chiefs tie it right back up. Eagles take the lead. Chiefs with only a field goal. Eagles with only a field goal, and it's a two-minute drill. Third and seven. Patrick Mahomes has to march down 72 yards in two minutes. A touchdown ties it, and they are out of timeouts. Mahomes under pressure, throwing crossbody. Holland can't get to it, but the pass fall is incomplete. Chiefs obviously forced to go for it in this spot. Game pretty much on the line here, or certainly is. It is game over if they do not get this. We're only rushing three. I don't know what the pressure is going to look like. Might not be existent, but they find Travis Kelsey. Didn't expect to throw that quickly, to be honest. Mahomes under pressure. Somebody get to him. That's one thing I'll say that's crazy about your, your like CPU pass rush is that these guys will never get to the quarterback. Dive. Make a play. Oh, up the middle. Kelsey, touchdown. That's fine. There's enough time to score. That's fine. Devontae Smith, 130 yards receiving this Super Bowl. Potential Super Bowl MVP inbound. See what Jalen Hurts can do on this Potential final drive. 39 seconds can go over the middle of the field easily. And that's caught by Graves. Ball came out really quickly. Jalen Hurts is dominating, by the way. Does have a pick in this game. But they've also allowed 500 or... Was it, did it say 500? Close to 500 yards? Yeah. Close to 500 yards of total offense. Thought that football would be out a little bit quicker. Nearly intercepted. But guess what? It wasn't. We're going to call our first timeout. Second and one. We called our second timeout. Our penultimate timeout. Just one remaining. 26 seconds. First down would be cool. And we get it. Which should pretty much be the game. 17 seconds to go. Why not play action pass and potentially lose the game? Sounds genius. <laughs> Looking like Jordan Love there. 8 seconds to go. One timeout. Up the middle. DeAndre Swift down to the 28-yard line. Final timeout will be called. And once again, a field goal wins it. Going to be from, what is a 45, 48. Here is the kick. It is up and it is good. Philadelphia wins it all yet again. I will be not super excited here. It is the Philadelphia Eagles after all. Jalen Hurts can't believe it. And that is it. Eagles win another one, their second. Took us a long time, to be honest. I thought this was going to be a team that could win it in year one, maybe year two. I think it takes until year four. But got it done in the end. Eagles get their Super Bowl, and that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.